uh, first of all let me thank the department of english of k e college mandanam for inviting me into this webinar program and i hope all of you are from the english department or from uh, different departments anyway uh, i will move on to the presentation now right please switch off your uh, microphone okay okay you can ping uh, this presentation and you can see it too ashkarali in your screen and you can pin uh, the presentation right uh, today's session is on teaching learning rebooted classroom ict in pandemic times so there are two objectives in this session one is to understand the role of ict or the information communication tools in teaching and learning and the second objective is to build some sort of confidence among teachers to use these ict tools or information communication tools in teaching learning and i would like to do it in a uh, in a hands on manner maybe it's very difficult to do it in a hands on session but i will try to do it in a a uh, cyber hands on session okay so we are all in this covid during covid 19 lockdown period and we are all facing the impacts of the corona virus and almost all the schools colleges and universities shut off all across the world and we can see the physical classrooms are no more now globally over around 1.3 billion children are out of the classroom and we are all forced to shift our teaching and learning towards online and digital platforms so education has changed dramatically in this covid 19 and most people say we can have two era one is pre covid and there will be another era that is post covid uh, sessions or post covid era so nowadays the teaching and learning is undertaken remotely on digital platforms that's why we are all here that's why we are all here in this webinar series and how we can tackle these situations so let me do with a short uh, activity so you can take your mobile phone or laptop whatever you have and just log into this website menti.com and just type this code first okay you may take your laptop or a mobile phone and just go to this website menti.com and use this code 850968 to join this code now what you have to do is you have to type some online learning tools that you have already used during this lockdown period you may have you may type three options there
just go to that website menti.com and use this code 8509 and 68 is there any problem with that okay yes sure so which are the online tools that you already used okay so one thing i am sure that most of them are used google classroom and google meet to handle these sessions <clears throat> and and very few are used whatsapp and moodle based platforms and some of them most of them are used google meet for video conferencing i think again it's changing yes anyway now let me ask the next question so what are the different conferencing tools that you used to handle your online classroom sessions you can choose okay most of them used google meet to interact with or to communicate with your students and to connect with them and and you pro provide the notes or the classroom handouts or lecture notes through whatsapp i think that's the way that we interacted with our students in this pandemic situation now this is and this itself shows how the education sectors has responded uh, towards this uh, this pandemic days so teachers have started offering video conferences and and also they are also uh, thinking about how to connect with the students remotely and they started and some of them started uh, to do the educational videos and broadcast those videos into youtube or um, as word audio clips or something like those ways so this is what happens in uh, these pandemic situations and you have used uh, one tool and this tool is known as a mentimeter and you can use this tool for uh, to collecting uh, data or information or to or, or, or even you can ask questions to students by using this mentimeter right this is one tool that i would like to introduce you uh, in this session so that is mentimeter and you students can respond very easily using uh, this menti.com if you uh, create a uh, activity using mentimeter then students can uh, respond to that activity through the website menti.com by providing a Uh, access code or a password or key codes so this is how we used uh, these uh, pandemic situations or uh, we, uh, we tried to overcome that pandemic situation now anyway if you analyze the teaching and learning process during this lockdown period it's completely unplanned nobody had knows what to do and how to do and everyone is sh rapidly sh moved towards this online learning and they were all searching for the better tools and better uh, uh, devices and to connect with the students and is there any better software uh, available now again and again another problem is that there is 
no training at all the teachers are uh, used these tools and even the students also use these tools without any training and there are any other problems like insufficient bandwidth uh, that's very it creates a lot of problems with uh, this both the students and also with the teachers too and moreover the very important one teachers have no time to prepare to make use of these online contents and they have not they are not trained teachers and they are they are no time to prepare uh, these contents through for this online now the people are uh, talking about the future of education how will be the uh, education uh, after this or this post pandemic situations then this situation will definitely demands us to integrate technology into our education systems and that's why we use a slightly different approach for this one that is known as a technology enhanced learning techniques and if you know about today's learners if you are thinking about our learners well they are all digital natives they are we can call them as a digital natives and they have a great fascination towards this technology use of technology and i think the best toy that your kid may have the smartphone with internet connectivity i call this generation as instead of calling them as a new gen i would like to call them as a net generation learners and they have a lot of skills also these net generations have a lot of uh, skills uh, one skill is they are all visual communicators you can try this one with your students if you teach them with visual aids then it would be more or better than your conventional teaching and learning approaches and again their ability to integrate both the virtual and the physical world together that's a great skill they are showing uh, in the uh, that's a, another uh, very good skill for this uh, generation so anyway we call this generation as a 21st century students you know that almost all the students in this undergraduate or undergraduate students are uh, all of them are born on our own after the 2000 right they are all different we can call them as a 21st century students they are all different they are all different having different attention spans and they are all having higher iq test scores and they are more uh, interested towards the socializing activities then there are lots and lots of research is going on how to teach this no new brain more effectively and more efficiently and how we can engage these students or these net generation more engagingly and most of the research shows that if you have technology you can engage effectively or efficiently these new brains that's why we uh, coin a different name for this as technology enhanced learning and teaching and learning approach so we call them as a use of technology for teaching and learning process you, either you can use the technology to assess your student you may use the student uh, technology to present the uh, uh, knowledge or to present the content to the students or you can use this technology to collaborate or to communicate with your students or the learners or even you can use to manage all the learning activities together by using technology and that's why we use we need to shift our gear into a, a technology enhanced mode then there will be a question why we use technology the answer is nothing but one is the students love technology because our learners you can engage our learners more efficiently if you 
engage if you use technology then we can engage them more efficiently and effectively so if you take a survey about your students then you can say that three out of four students would be able to study they won't be able to study without technology because and you can engage them effectively by using this now we are all uh, talking about the Facebook walls and they read they spend lots and lots of time in social networking so as a teacher uh, then how we can tackle or how we can utilize this passionate towards this technology into the teaching and learning process and another reason for use of technology is that the power of collaboration that the technology brought to us we can collaborate anyway one example is this one itself we are conducting a webinar i am sitting in a calicut and i am presenting a, a webinar or a presentation at uh, for the people in and around this country itself then that itself is a power of collaboration we can collaborate for video we can collaborate uh, to generate a video or to generate a document itself there are lots and lots of uh, uh, power for this technology to use these collaborations then another reason is we can communicate our native speakers in real time environment I, I, I think all of you have English teachers. Most of them are English teachers. Why can't we think about a uh, technique or why can't we use a technology to make use of a, uh, to, uh, either a Skype or a Google Meet to uh, communicate uh, the student, to interact with the students, with the native speakers. We can use those, uh, we can utilize those uh, advantages by using this uh, technology so we are all forced to transform our teaching and learning into digital technology and I'm sure that if you use effectively and appropriately then it may enhance learning the students learning and I, 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 I'm quoting that word appropriately you must use technology on the appropriately that's very important if you are using always if you like to use a technology then uh, every time you go into the classroom uh, with a powerpoint presentation then the students that won't be uh, effective uh, but you can mix the technology tools to uh, in a different and in an appropriate way that's better i think and when you transform or when you shift your gear from this conventional teaching learning into the digital technology it, it is not an easy task to move from the traditional teaching into the digital environment it's very difficult there are a lot of uh, motivating factors and also there are lots of uh, demotivating factors so if you have the skill to overcome these barriers or to uh this uh, barrier or you if you have the skill then you can easily uh, go into or you can shift the gear into the digital learning environment anyway not the last not the least uh but you can't spell teach without tech in after pandemic this situation after COVID, uh, i i've coined the word uh like it is after COVID, after disease maybe it's after disease after disease it is very difficult to spell the teach without tech that's why we use the teaching and uh, technology for teaching and learning now what are the skill as a teacher what are the skills you need to uh, acquire after COVID? one is 
you have you must have the ability to create a uh, visually engaging content that is very important uh, to get the attention of uh, our net generation learners and you must have a skill to create interactive video contents otherwise it's very uh, boring uh, the lecture or the video, our uh, online classroom sessions will be get bored and you must have an skill to record and edit audio and video clips you need to acquire that skill if you don't have and you must be able to use the digital learning platforms how to operate how to conduct online assessment how to conduct the presentation how to interact with the students how to uh, provide a discussion rooms except uh, something like those scenarios how to handle all those scenarios and how to use the collaborative tools it there are a lot it, different types of collaborative learning tools are uh, available and uh, that may reduce uh, the workload as a teacher uh, if you use uh, different collaborative loans you you may familiar with different collaborative learning tools like uh, google documents and uh, other tools and and another thing okay. <laughs> that's good uh, another thing is uh, you must have an ability to use the social media for your professional development so you are all now going to become a 21st century skilled teacher for a 21st century skilled teacher uh, these are the skills that you must have you must be a tech savvy you must be a computer savvy you must be a creative you must be creative because that's very important we have different tools then how we use these tools is very important than the tool itself you can use uh, even the um, uh, google document or the microsoft powerpoint or any you, you have plenty different tools but how you use is very important you have a one a communication tool like whatsapp and how we can effectively or creatively use whatsapp for uh, handling my classroom sessions that's very important even using a whatsapp itself you can overcome uh, the problems that you normally you face in these situations uh, then that that's about your creativity determines how we we can uh, success uh, succeed in these situations and uh, another thing is you must be a critical must be critical because our students are much more critical than us and the you must be constructive and you must be connected don't um, uh, think about i don't have the enough connectivity here uh, because the institution is not providing enough uh, bandwidth for us that that's not the question you must you are a teacher then you must have the connectivity and if you are student doesn't have this connectivity then we can we will try to provide those connectivity to those students and not the last not uh, uh, it, it is not the last one but you must be very much a communicative there are a lot of uh, different tools available for uh, assessment and i'm just stick on one or two tools for assessment because this session is uh, uh, entirely uh, designed for assessment how to do assessment using uh, tech, digital tools so uh, different tools are available and i would like to do a hands on session with you and first these are uh, some of the tools we can use for assessment or for online assessment one is kahoot kahoot is very uh, very easy you can create a kahoot in a very easy manner and i will demonstrate how to create a uh, online assessment using kahoot and we can do one kahoot also and another one it is socrative socrative is another uh, type of uh, doing uh, assessment then mentimeter is uh, that already we uh, use that mentimeter tool so first of all let us look on kahoot so are you all ready let's do an activity with kahoot
so again take your laptop or a, a mobile phone whatever it, it it may be and let us start play a uh, kahoot and here there is a limitation right now we have only a basic this is uh, uh, we can only 50 players can play at a time so let's start with a, a english testing skills right so i will start you can see what to do with these things uh, you may yes you may click this website kahoot.it and just enter this pin number just take your mobile phone just take your mobile phone and type kahoot.it better if you use uh, google chrome just type kahoot.it so here we are playing in a synchronous manner because uh, we can test whether all of you are uh, have uh, who, who will want this match only 50 players can play at a time in this version if you have the premium version then you can you may have a large number of students can play but for a classroom it's better uh, it's enough for 50 students now it's 43 Better if you type your uh, real name. Right? I don't know whether it, it allows or not. But let's start. Let us start. Sixty is there, but they will uh, limit the number, maybe. Okay, let's start. You have uh, some questions here. This is the first question. Which spelling is correct? You may click on your mobile phone or a screen. You have 10 minutes, 10 seconds more. Now it's time up. OK. Now let us see. Now Raz is on the top, right? Now let us go for the next. Now I am controlling this activity itself, right? Now you will get the second question. Every year, he goes to the coast for his holidays dash it's something related to english uh, grammar or something like just copied all these things the answer is by train okay now next question now now m is on the top question number three which one is correct just read okay the answer is the green one so 34 have the correct answers right still m is on the top you can meet me dash you like
okay whenever most of them are correct excuse me sir yes so the question is not displayed is there any problem because your internet connectivity yeah i can't see the questions okay okay it's maybe due to the internet connectivity okay sir which one is correct okay it is necessary okay now question number 6 which spelling is correct if you have any problem in uh, displaying these things then you may just pin the presentation that's why i i uh, switched off my webcam so it is hippopotamus good now next question question number 7 which one is correct okay now shikha is on the top yes question number 8 you can construct a questions in a that's why i talk to you that you must be creative in uh making the questions okay so now the last question identify the mistake okay so this is the podium third prize goes to m yeah. and the first prize goes to vidya okay this is how we can uh, do a kahoot now let us look on how to create a kahoot uh, in your own so in order to create a kahoot you just take a tab new tab you can do it now itself you can just take a kahoot or you can download a kahoot app uh, even uh, it is available in google apps or google play store it's available you can download kahoot app and then you can easily create uh, these type of uh, assessments now or if you don't have the app then you can take use this website kahoot.com just click on kahoot.com and then you need to create or you need to log in into the kahoot for that you need to create an account so just create on login button so you may click on login button i already logged in if you don't have an account then you may need to create an account first 
do all those formalities first. Now let us create an a Kahoot. So this is what we call that home page of a Kahoot. And here you can see uh, first uh, tab is home where we can see our uh, Kahoot options or Kahoot uh, used Kahoot, etc. Everything is there. Then second option is discover. You can discover your own Kahoot, right? There are lots of uh, number of Kahoots are available and you can just reuse all those Kahoots. Say, for example, suppose I'm going to discover one Kahoot here. Just click on discover. Say which topic you want. Maybe anyone can uh, share your thoughts about that. Which topic you are going to deal with. Say, for example, uh, ICT. English. Uh, hmm? Yes. English, English, English pronunciation. English pronunciation. Okay. Okay. Let us search for English pronunciation. Here already uh, there are different uh, number of uh, Kahoots are available here. Say, I just click on the first one itself, right? Either you can use this one or you can uh, modify the same as you are on because it is uh, their policy shows that you need to make it public then only you can use Kahoot of free of cost otherwise you need to pay for that so here what we are doing is and just duplicating this one just click on these three dots and just duplicate Now here is my Kahoot. It is available in my own Kahoot. Now it becomes my own, right? Now I'm going to just edit this Kahoot because this is a duplicate of pronunciation, British or English, American language, whatever it may be. Then I just click on again these three dot buttons, then click on edit. Okay, now here is the Kahoot question. Uh, you can prepare or you can make questions here. Now, if you want to uh, edit the name, you can just click at this point and you can click the edit. Say, I'm going to uh, edit the name as for BA English students. Right? Now you can do all those things. Then you need to make the you, you, you may make the visibility as only to you or you can only uh, visible to everyone. It's better it is every make it use uh, use everyone. And then Click on done button here, right? Once it is done, then it is uh, it is saved into our, our my Kahoot. Now, if you want to edit the question, just click on the question. Say, for example, B E or A E. I don't know what uh, it meant for. Uh, here it is the. If you want to change the British answer, English, British English and American uh, English. Uh, yeah, yeah, yes, yes. Okay, uh, British English or American English. If this is correct then uh, just click on the tick mark then you can see a green mark here and if you want to add more you can add click here and add uh, it is europe in english maybe uh, i don't know any uh, type of uh, english is there right this is the third option indian now, english indian english in the fourth yes. oh, okay okay this is Indian English. Yes. Now, uh, the correct is if the uh, this is the right answer, then you can make a tick mark here, right? And you can set the time here. Uh, here you can use 
uh, say it, it requires only 10 seconds or if you want it, it requires 30 seconds you can set that and you can set the points also here uh, points is 2000 or uh, 1000 or 2000 there are three different levels 0 1000 and 2000 so i said it has 1000 now there now if you want to edit the second question you can just click on the second question also third or fourth now here there is only one question only there okay these are all videos right uh -huh, uh -huh. and yes we can check whether it is what or not yes you need to hear the pronunciation and uh, see decide yeah if it is, uh, decide whether if it is british or american yes yes after uh, watching this video then student need to answer whether it is british english or american english so then another provision in uh, kahoot is that you can add question here if you want to add more question then you can click on this add question or you can add questions from the question bank that's a very very nice feature in kahoot so here click on this question bank right then you can search for a question here say for example i'm going to search for um, What, what can you tell me a question let us try uh, english uh, yes oh, yes here oh, i guess when i click here then it shows uh, www dot means okay then if you want to add this question then click on add or you can search uh, what is the biggest animal in the world or whatever it may be and what is lms okay that's what i'm thinking of. what is lms yes one question is here you just need to click here add button then it automatically add to your kahoot here is the question right it's very easy to uh, add a question into kahoot and when you finish all those things and if you want to delete any question then you can see here just click on this delete button and confirm the delete then it's done mm -hmm. then uh, after finishing all your editings then click on the done button and if you want to preview that that uh, activity or the kahoot you can preview it so it's done then if you want to test this kahoot you can just check on the test and then click on edit done button then it's automatically saved into your Kahoot. Now, uh, let us make use of this Kahoot. So if you want to play with your students, there are two options available. One, you can play uh, in live session or you can play in asynchronous mode. Now, if you want to play with your students, then uh, click on this play button here. Then there are two modes are available. One is for virtual classroom that we already uh, uh, applied in the last session uh, using this mode and if you want to use a self-paced learning mode you can assign the students to do this challenge as a challenge so here it is the challenge i just click on the assign then uh, we can set the time or the deadline it is available up to 24th of june and up to what time yes you can set the time and you may switch on the question timer okay or if you want to switch off or switch on if you want to randomize the answer order then you can have and then it's uh, uh, this player limit is uh, restricted to 50 only then once you finish all these things then you just need to click on the create button so you will get a, a link for this activity and just share that link with your student So this is the link. You can just copy this URL and share with your student through Google Classroom or your learning management systems or uh, through uh, which tool you are using to communicate with your students. Now, another option is if you have the pin number, 
now students can if you, if the students have the kahoot app then they can easily enter the uh, activity using this pin number also right it is automatically generated these pin numbers are automatically generated and the students can enter the room in automatically and they can play the uh, activity now the third part is how to create the reports now kahoot also provide a report and you can download the report and you can analyze the report and you can uh, it's very nice to see the reports here uh, continue to your report here i have we can just check this report this is our last uh, finished game lot of reports are available so if you want to check just click on open here we can have the analysis report and players are here and what are those question answers correct answers uh, vidya have come with uh, 90 percentage correct answers that's why she got the rank one and unanswered question is is none and her final score is this one and again if you want more detailed report then you can take the print out of the uh, uh, you can upload this report into an csv or an excel format here we have what is that okay questions okay uh, we can analyze this for every question and see here uh 24 are correct and 13 are wrong we can analyze uh, this here now i think they have uh, some uh, difficulty in accessing the csv file ah yes here it is the report option we can take the reports in or we can download the report here right you can download the report in csv or in excel format or you can directly upload into your google drive this is how we can use kahoot for interactive learning assessments right another tool another tool is uh, socrative uh, you can try socrative in your own and socrative is again uh, have two different approaches one it is self paced and uh, synchronous mode or a live session it's also supported by the socrative then mentimeter mentimeter we can create mentimeter uh, you can create presentations and also assessments using mentimeter i will demonstrate how to use mentimeter here so here it is the mentimeter so in order to use the mentimeter you need to uh, use the address mentimeter.com this is the website address mentimeter.com here also you need to sign up for an account so click on the sign up button and create and log in to your uh, presentation okay this is my uh, mentimeter dashboard now if you want to create a new presentation just click on new presentation here so i just name this as ke college or your question answer sessions for this is for question answer sessions right so i have created one presentation here this is for my question answer session now here you can directly add any type of question say for example i am going to use um I, i used this word cloud a word cloud activity earlier and if i use a multiple choice you can have a multiple choice right now you can type the question here right who is the prime minister of india now type the answer here
and one thing. If you want to add more options, you can add. And if you if your question contain any image, and you can add image here, right? Now, if you want to display the uh, result layout in bars format or donut format or pie format, whatever format you want, you may have those format here. So, uh, I will use this format. How many of them are uh, correct, or how many of them are I uh, answered Narendra Modi, and how many of you are answered Amit Shah? Uh, something like those ways now then uh, if you want to add more questions then uh, again click on add slide then if you want to use a question answer session then click on this one so suppose I want uh, I used to uh, get uh, questions uh, any doubts related to this one then I just ask me anything question then I will share this with you so in order to share in order to share this with your student just click on this share button click on this share button and uh, give this id here either you can copy the link here or you can share the link with uh, through whatsapp or uh, something like that, those communication medias or you can uh, use this code four five four seven four seven four four participating in this uh, activity. So this is how we can create a, a online assessment very easily by using a Mentimeter, and you can uh, display the live results here also, right? So this is how we can create live uh, Mentimeter. So just try to use the Mentimeter uh, to uh, do some assessment with your student. If you want to present, then you can just click on this present button. So Mentimeter is used to create the assessments and menti.com is used to play the, uh, the activity. So that's the difference. Mentimeter is used to create the activity. So that's for teachers and menti.com is for uh, students to play with the activity so it's very easy to use these two uh, uh, tools for to engage your students in your live sessions right now now anything yes so it is mentimeter now if you want to interact uh, uh, content development if you want any interactive content development you may use different tools uh, I, I, being an English teacher then you may use uh, BBC's uh, resources BBC have a lot of uh, resources uh, you may try with six minute English uh, to st uh, for uh, uh, giving an assignment or, or for or, uh, creating a, a test paper or an activity you can use six minute English students may uh, assigned a, uh, a podcast to listen and then try to answer those questions and if you want to record and upload an audio then uh, I uh, suggest this Vocaro is very interesting uh, you can just create and uh, record and uh, upload and read audio file by using this Vocaro uh, just click on this uh, button and then record your voice and then download or upload into wherever you want or you can share the same link in your uh, classrooms you don't need to upload anywhere but you just need to uh, maybe if you want i will demonstrate wakara to to here so here it is wakaro just click on wakaro.com the interface is very simple just click on this record button and start recording uh, whatever you want you can uh, say and uh, even you can um, use this tool to give a vo voice assignments to the students also and you need give a uh, question to the students to record uh, tell something about uh, the covid uh, disease in your own words 
or uh, this pandemic situations in your uh, area uh, then uh, try to give an assignment like this way and uh, students are encouraged to use this vocar to record their voice now after this uh, i have just stopped the recording then if you want you can just play this here and check whether it is working or not then you may share or save and share this button yeah just click on the uh, copy this link and share wherever you want you can just whatsapp or uh, facebook or wherever you want you can just uh, share with your student uh, also the student uh, tell the students also to use this tool to record their voice and uh, send the voice assignments uh, to you so that's another tool to introduce is vocaro if you want to record and upload audios and videos then uh, another tool is very very interesting tool is flipgrid flipgrid is uh, now from microsoft and uh, it's an interactive it's a uh, uh, i think it's a very good tool for uh, interaction for especially the teachers like in english teachers can you make use of uh, these type of tools the flipgrid flipgrid uh, you can record and uh, you can uh, give assignments using grid say for example if you want to use a grid here say we can create an assignment uh, by using a video assignments are possible and students may need to answer using the video assignments also right if you want to create a new grid just click on this add a new grid and just give a topic here say again english language ability test Okay, or presentations if you want to uh, check the presentation skills right? presentation skills now here we can as a teacher you can use different way uh, either you can provide uh, the student id or you can uh, provide a educator if you have a microsoft or google email id then you can use uh, make use of this uh, facility also and so suppose i am now using this one this is for educator learning community then here we have the flip code if you want you can create your own flip code here the website address is flipgrid.com then the flip code then say for example this is ke college this is for ke college so this is my uh, grid ke college english okay this is enough k okay, college then i just click on the next right and if you want you can you may add a password here then click on next right then the flip grid is started this is the uh, my flip grid address you need just need to copy the flip grid then go to your grid click on the go to your grid grid then we can add the question here right and if you want you it's an interactive uh, learning environment flipgrid is an interactive learning environment that teacher can provide the material here and they can interact with the students and here i'm going to add a new topic this is my grid my class uh, presentation uh, grid for the presentation skills and just adding a new topic here just click on the this is my course page okay now i'm just adding a new topic this is uh, uh, presentation skill assignment okay presentation skill assignment and you may add a question here uh, okay record uh, a 1 minute video and send to me okay it's enough you may use the recording time say i and just use one minute only then if the teacher want you may uh, add a video record a video here or if you have any video available you may record you may upload a video 
and if you have any of this uh, if you have a kahoot also you if we can add a kahoot itself here uh, you can share a kahoot here say if you want to record a video just click on the record button right then here it is uh, my window then lot of options are available here so here it is the first is the recording I, it will record my video and if you you want to use a drawing board you can just uh, uh, select a pen here and you can mark here and if you want to use a blackboard you can just click on this board button and if you want a whiteboard then you can use a whiteboard here and if you are not interested in whiteboard you can use use a, a blackboard right if you are uh, more familiar with uh, black whiteboard then you may use that one and again if you click on the record button then you may uh, record all those activities right so now i am going to teach all these things right and now i'm just going to switch off this one and if you want to remove all these things uh, yeah if you want to place a sticker all those and if you want to type any text here you can just type a text here right type a text yes this is an lcd type text here something went wrong yes type as text So, and if you want to change the color or something, these are all, all these are possible with, and if you want to stop the record, then just click on here, then click on the next button. And now I'm going to teach all these things, right? And now I'm just going to switch off this one. Everything is possible. And then click on next, then it will, if you want, you may add a selfie also so here, if, if you want. Uh, hi, say say hi. Okay, you may add a selfie. Then upload. Uh, these videos are uploaded into your Flipgrid. Then directly you can share these uh, to your students. Either you uh, uh, share this uh, Flipgrid into your uh, Moodle or learning management system, or you can share this one in your Google Classroom or wherever you want you can share this flip grid so i'm just attaching the video is uh, comparatively in more than one minute or two minutes that's why it takes a lot of time anyway you may try this one also flip grid is also another uh, uh, nice tool to interact with your students uh, through uh, during this uh, lockdown period and maybe the students will uh, will be more interested in your class if you use all those to tools in your classroom sessions right i just show you how to attach this one and you may test whether it how it works with your students also it's anyway So that's the thing. Uh, Flipgrid is another thing. Then again, uh, the last thing is uh, if you want to get all these tools together in one platform, then it will be more interesting. Then the solution is you need to use a learning management systems. That's why we use a learning management systems in uh, universities and colleges. A learning management system is nothing but it's a web-based digital learning platform to manage and plan, implement, and assess all the aspects of learning uh, in teaching and learning. And there are different learning management systems are available nowadays. And popular one is Moodle. You may be familiar with Moodle. And Canvas is another one. Blackboard is uh, it's a proprietary one. So these are the three available. Uh, and more than that, uh, there are uh, uh, learning management systems like Schoology is there uh, and uh, Google Classroom. Google Classroom is not a complete learning management. So we can call it as a CMS. It's a content management system. And that's all now. 
uh, about this presentation now you may ask anything you if i want to add more then you may add any if you have any questions any comments or concerns and if you have any questions you may just post the questions in my uh, mendy.com also and i will show you you just go to that mendy mendy meter here is my question if you again go to the mendy.com and use the code 850968 and place your question right now that can ask you questions sir okay sure if anyone uh, need uh, more then you may type the question in the mentimeter also okay sir uh, sir uh, of all the uh, assessment uh, tools that uh, you have used so far yes which one do you think is uh, the most uh, reliable one to track uh, the student activity and also to assess them i'm asking this because uh, one of the challenges we are facing these days is to uh, track uh, the student activity how much time they are spending uh, with uh, the content that we are creating and uh, uh, conveying to them okay so in order to track the students learning activity then you have to use uh, one thing i would suggest is you need to use uh, learning management systems like moodle or uh, those uh, canvas or moodle then only we can track the students uh, whether they are learning better or not so it's better to use a learning management system and if you use a kahoot then in kahoot also there is a uh, mechanism to uh, know Uh, whether the students are learning or not not learning whether the specific questions are there how many students are answered uh, correctly or not that's only uh, possible with a kahoot okay thank you sir uh, another question is uh, here it is how can we um, conduct an online examination we can conduct online examination using kahoot right at at that at this point of time it's better to uh, use a kahoot or a uh, mentimeter a kahoot is better i think uh, you can use a multiple choice or a true or false type questions and if you have uh, the, the tools like moodle or uh, those learning management system then it's better to conduct uh, even the essay type uh, examinations also uh do the students also need to download which uh, whichever we are using uh there is no need to download all the softwares because they can play or they can do these things uh, in uh, in the web browser itself that's why we can use uh, those things in web browser itself that's better uh, if uh, if the students want to use a uh, app then they can download the app that's up to their choice then another question is uh, can all the online application that you have suggested be integrated in microsoft teams yes sure almost all uh, applications are uh, integrate in, uh, integrate with microsoft teams or uh, you can integrate with uh, learning management systems or google classroom that can be done now next one is uh, assessment of students through mcq can be done through uh, the tool you mentioned but do they all have any mechanism for longer answers as not all topics uh, can be reduced to mcq sure but you may uh, use your creativity to check their knowledge level uh, one thing you need to know is that the technology is not a substitute for uh, for a teacher you can't uh, substitute a teacher with a technology or a google meet or a google classrooms right the teacher is a very important part of uh, this teaching learning process 
and he must be a gate his role maybe the role may be changed uh, sometimes it may be a facilitator or sometimes it it may be maybe a gate or sometime it may be a lecturer sometime it may be a tutor and sometime it may be a parent okay uh, technology can't be do all those things right so it's a, not a substitute but we need to uh, use our creativity to effective use of uh, or the appropriate use of this technology uh, to overcome th these situations and if you have the learning management systems like moodle or canvas uh, or uh, schoology uh, then you can do something uh, more or for better uh, to conduct all long answer question or a descriptive type questions or answers uh, 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 like that the uh, activities are possible uh, with those learning management systems also you can track the progress of the learner also Uh, is it possible to conduct a three-hour examination with the help of any of these? Uh, it's a criminal, <laughs> I think, because uh, the government also asked you to uh, do, not to conduct an online session uh, more than two hours, right? Then how can you conduct a three-hour examinations by using these tools? Because the bandwidth is very much limited for the student students compared to the teachers, okay? So any more questions? Or you might type questions in the, is there any questions in chat box? So there is a question from Dr. Veena. She has asked which application is most effective for language teaching? Yeah, surely. Uh, the, uh, Flipgrid is much more effective. I think Flipgrid is good. Kahoot is good, right? And uh, you may apply your uh, uh, I, uh, what, what what I talked told you earlier that creativity. Apply your creativity. How to uh, how you set your questions. That is very important. Then which tool you are using? Okay. Any more? If you have, if you want any specific tool or something like those, at this point of time, you may use, uh, uh, try to explore the features of uh, at least Google, uh, explore the features of Google Classroom or something like those. Google Classroom is, uh -huh. uh, you can use Google Classroom for at this point of time, if you don't have uh, the Moodle or uh, or a Canvas or something like those uh, learning management systems, then you can at least try to use utilize uh, the power of a Google Classroom, or you can use uh, WhatsApp, and you may create contents using Kahoot or a Flipgrid or Mentimeter, and try to interact with your student, and you may use uh, a Google Meet or Zoom or Skype for interacting with your students. And either uh, this is how we can manage, at least manage, uh, up to August, right? That's all. So there is one more question from Mr. Dilip Kumar. Uh, he okay. has asked, will you please name some more effective applications for easy audio or video recording for lectures? Yeah, sure. Uh, if you want to create your own video lectures, then you can use, uh, I suggest, uh, one simple application is Screencast-O-Matic. You can record your own video lectures in a just one or two clicks. Uh, you can uh, create a video lecture up to uh, 15 minutes by using Screencast-O-Matic uh, because it's very simple and um, uh, and uh, you can create in one or two minutes. That's why I suggest the, that tool to create your video lecture and you can directly upload uh, that video lecture. Another tool is uh, another one. It is uh, uh, you can use OBS Studio if you want to do it in professionally. You make it so much professionally, then you can use uh, OBS Studio. That is Open Broadcast Studio uh, 
it's oh, it's a freely available it's an open source software right so if you want to create uh, video lectures then you can just create using screen uh, screen recording for free then click and launch then record that's enough for a free uh, screen customatic and uh, if you have a mobile phone then you can use uh, either of the screen recording applications uh, if you have uh, screen customatic is also available in uh, mobile phone and uh, another one it is uh, a to z screen recorder is there or you can use duo a uh, lot of applications are there are there any more doubts if you have any more doubts you can raise it now otherwise we'll uh, go you know we'll call it a day and we'll wrap the presentation ma'am uh, the first video session name of the first video creator please i was uh, filling the form and the screen sorry for that the first video creator ah uh, yeah screen the, cast automatic uh, can you please type the name i was uh, i could ah, okay 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 i will i will okay. you want to uh, no I, i will demonstrate how to record it uh -huh. yes sir okay. uh so there is one more question okay um okay uh do we need to get permission to use google classroom this is asked by ms pratipa uh pardon me there is a question from ms pratipa uh mm huh -hmm. she asked sir do we need to get permission to use google classroom I mean, we are asked something like that as part of terms of conditions while creating a class. No, Google Classroom is now you can use Google Classroom for free, and if you have G Suite account, then you can create a Google Classroom for your institution itself, right? If you have G Suite account, you can uh, create account for every student in your institution, and you can use the all the tools. Are required for your Google Classroom. Like you can use integrate uh, Google Meet in your Google Classroom itself. If you have uh, G Suite account, then you can use. Uh, if you want to uh, uh, take an account in G Suite, then you need to uh, uh, do some formalities with Google. That means you need to submit an application, and then they will verify your institution. And uh, th this is for institutions. right then they will verify your institution whether it is uh, the and they will provide uh, uh, how many students you your college or institution have then they will provide you uh, for each and every student they will provide a, a email address or a google account for each and every student e e also the teachers then uh, you you may allow to create google classrooms and Uh, you can share the you can utilize all the resource or the app applications uh, with the google education suite to your uh, share with your students and you can use all those things okay now if you want to create a video lecture then just click on the screencastomatic.com right just uh, type screencastomatic.com then click on the button start recording for free then that's the click number 1 then the second click it is uh, click on the launch free recorder then then it will download a small application uh, it's around um, uh, some around 100 kb or something like that 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 much size is there then if you click on it it will be downloaded in your download folder then if you click on the download folder then it will pop up uh, uh, a window then open the screen customatic launcher then just click on the screen customatic launcher right then it will open up now it is starting up now what you have to do is you need to open a presentation now it is updating okay uh now if you want to uh, do a presentation with 
पावर पॉइंट और यस नाउ इट्स ऑपन अप इफ यू वांट टू एडजस्ट द स्क्रीन साइज व्हाट एवर इट इज इनसाइड दिस लॉन्जर इट विल बी रिकॉर्डेड सो आई एम जस्ट ओपनिंग माय प्रेजेंटेशन हियर एंड आई जस्ट ट्राई टू एडजस्ट और फिट दिस लॉन्जर इनटू दिस here okay up to this here now i'm just starting to record my session here now if you want to record screen only then you can just uh, go with the screen if you want to record both the screen and webcam then we can click on the both then it will open up my webcam yes i will allow the webcam for here yes is that out okay what happened uh, permission to webcam is al already given to the uh, uh, google meet that's why anyway so i'm uh, st stick with screen only he now here now if you want to record then just click on this record button first so i'm just open this on the first itself slide itself i'm just going to start click on the record button 3 2 1 now go now the recording is started then i just to try to explain all those things right right then once you finish click on the button here then then save and upload don't go to edit window or edit now it's uploaded it's already recorded now you can just click on the save video file or you can directly upload if you don't have any antivirus or something like those then software then you can directly upload to youtube otherwise you need to save the uh, video file as a mp4 file in your folder itself now if you want you can check here now the recording is started then i just to try to explain all those things right right then once you finish click on the button then just click on the save button and give a name yes my first video and it, uh, the destination is at the desktop then publish everything is finished right so it's uh, that much easy uh, to record a video using a uh, screen castomatic you don't need to uh, again uh, you, you you don't need any professional experience to record all those things it's very easy right that's all okay anyway i hope uh, you have enjoyed the session uh, once again i thank uh, the department of english i visited that college uh, in, in 2018 i think in january or something Uh, th those days and i uh, presented one uh, paper uh, about ict in teaching and learning at the again that so this is the second time i got that chance to interact with you okay once again thank you